everybody who's watching on our English audience, you may not have met my boss, Joachim Klaassen, uh, Linus's uncle too. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So here at the TV station, he's the one that helps us get all of the fun stuff. <laughs> and the tech tips is actually my, it's my uh, field in one sense. But I, I promise not to touch it since I get so excited. <laughs> yeah. he, he's a Samsung guy and a PC guy, and we're all iPhone and, and Mac people. I've been tempting him to come on and do a, a Samsung versus iPhone episode with us for a long yeah, time. Why not? <laughs> <laughs> but but to, today we have a short announcement. We got some Sony cameras. They're 4K ready cameras. And we're going to be putting these together, making a TV bus out of them and we'll have some tech tips coming along the way for you guys to see, but for now, we're yeah, gonna open we'll this up. open it up yeah. because we're so thrilled about it. Yeah, exactly. So they just arrived yesterday yeah, exactly. at lunch, so. We were a little worried the uh, delivery guy was having a hard time finding <laughs> us. <laughs> so Amanda, what's in this box? So this is the camera itself. Yeah, and, and a gadgets beside. Gadgets beside. <clears throat> we'll have to make sure we get Caleb to get us some B-roll here. Yeah. So, yeah. So this is the, the lens? Yeah, exactly. And it is... It, it, what would you say? Is this kind of a standard lens for... for it it is a standard TV broadcast lens. 20 times zoom. Really nice B4 mount lens. For a multi-purpose Exactly. Yeah. You want these kind of lenses when you're doing broadcast because you, you have the standard f-stop all the way through. You have all of the control from the camera control upstairs, the remotes, which we have here, the RCPs. Would you say this is for in-house in or? No, you can go outside with okay. that too. The ND filters are always built into broadcast cameras, so you can see right there. I Our viewers are really into ND filters <laughs> built in. Right, guys? I put this in the bag again. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, here's our camera. We're very excited to bring this to you. Everything's fiber connected. And uh, again, thanks, you, Joachim. Yeah, and again, <laughs> thanks to viewers, because it wouldn't have been possible unless we had viewers that were standing by. No, exactly. All of our viewers in Sweden and in Scandinavia have helped us get here. So yeah, yeah. thanks for being a part, guys. Yeah. All right, welcome to Tech Tips. Today, I have a very unique video for you. I, I, I don't know how much detail you guys are looking for, but I thought it would be interesting if you saw how to assemble a camera chain, more or less, for a broadcast system. We just got in some new Sony HXC FB80s. So they're fiber pack and they are 4K ready. So they output out of the back of the CCU. The CCU converts everything up to uh, UHD. So just under 4K. Today we have a CCU that we're gonna connect to an RCP, that we're gonna connect to a camera, that we're gonna connect to a lens. <laughs> and all the stuff in between. So let's get started. First things first, I got my camera body here and I have a lot of stuff to attach to the camera body. I, oh yeah, I have the monitor too. So this is an excellent little viewfinder, really bright. You need a nice big viewfinder when you have broadcast cameras uh, because sometimes it's very bright, sometimes it's very dark. You're in all kinds of different scenarios and live broadcast can be very demanding. So you need something that's bright and good. These monitors are awesome. Uh, what I'm gonna start with is mounting the monitor because again, they give you a million little pieces to assemble. So we'll just go through it. And uh, oh, I, think, I think I have to take these little nubs out. It's been a long time since I put together a system from scratch but we'll do it. So you can see it's kind of just a standard V-mount that is gonna go on the, the viewfinder here. Just like that. And then it squeezes to come off. Yep, just like that. And I need to add little screws. Let's see here, I got little nubbins 
in the screw holes. Sony's awesome at hiding all the places, so if you don't get the accessories, you can just, uh, no one will ever know that it was, wasn't supposed to be there, something. All right, Ooh. comes with screws and an Allen key even to connect this. Let us know in the comments if you guys are interested in more broadcast shenanigans. We have all kinds of broadcast stuff that we end up doing. Of course, we love testing backpacks and we like to be out doing uh, uh, field tests with things, but sometimes this is our life. Just playing with equipment and calibrating it with other equipment, and seeing what, what goes to what. We just installed a new playout system. I hope that I can give you guys a sneak peek of that as well. Uh, playout system, if you guys don't know, is the thing that plays the playlist for your TV channel. So if you're watching National Geographic or, I don't know, Discovery Channel, the, they have something that's playing a playlist for you that we would call in the industry a playout. So there we go. Right from the get-go, that's all connected. And then I just swivel my viewfinder piece around and there just like that now I won't leave that on at the moment because I have to put some other stuff on I got a little strap here this strap is to help hold the fiber cable or triax or whatever you're going to use we have a fiber kit here today so this little strap attaches on to help support the strap on the connection side. So this is where the fiber cable is going to go in. And if I just remove this little piece of material here, it's in there nice and tight. Again, like they really want to hide the fact that if you didn't buy it you, or didn't need it, it doesn't show. And so I want to take my little buckle here and I'm going to attach it right on the side here. So much fun. <laughs> I have to do a whole bunch of these today, so I thought you guys would like to be a part of it. <laughs> and if you're going to go ahead and do a assembly like this, it's always handy to have a multi-tool standing by with your fil favorite Phillips head ready. I always think it's funny they provide the Allen keys for you, but they never provide a Phillips screwdriver for you. I mean, we paid a lot for the cameras. You could at least put a Phillips screwdriver in for us. Brand it with Sony, so we remember you next time we buy cameras. Come on, Sony. If it was a Canon camera, I bet you would not. <laughs> oh, there we go, so yeah. So that just attaches, so it gives a little bit of, takes a little bit of the pressure off of your camera cable. So the next fun thing I have to attach, I'm gonna set the camera body aside and bring out the lens. Now this isn't, uh, this isn't a too exciting lens, so for all of you lens fanatics out there, you have to forgive me. This is just a really standard 20 times 2.8 lens. 2.8 the whole way. Uh, standard Canon broadcast lens. Now in the past, I was able to attach my focus and, and controls right straight to the servo on this side. I don't know why, but they've changed that and they have sent me an additional attachment for the focus. So I have my zoom handle here to be attached and then I have to attach the uh, focus config over on this side here somewhere. I'm assuming I'm probably gonna have to remove that to do it, and this big thing here is gonna screw on there. This comes off, there it is. And gently mount this to the side of the camera. There's, you can kinda see there's an elevated spot right there. Uh, I believe that's where I'm aiming for to line up the focus servo with the focus ring. So let's see here if I can just get that into place nicely. I'm just gonna hand tighten it until I get it powered on and I can see how much torque I have there. So if you over tighten it, it won't, maybe might not move or it might grind the gears if you have it not quite right. I try to get it as hand tight as I can and then very, very gently test it once I get the power on and then tighten it to 
perfection. Now, you have connection cables here, camera body for the lens, and uh, this is gonna connect to the Zoom controller. All right. You guys know to be careful with your own uh, sensors at home. It's no different with a broadcast lens. We don't want any dust to come in here and we don't want to damage it in any way, shape or form. So I'm gonna very carefully use the bayonet mount to remove the cap, making sure that no dust is coming off the cap from shipping. Oh, that's so clean. But I can see there's no debris in and around. So I'm gonna take off the lens cap as well. Awesome. There's my mount. And I'm just gonna to try to bring them together. Once they're lined up, I very carefully lay it on its back like this because I just wanna make sure, yeah, did you see how it just sort of settled in place there? I just wanna make sure that it's in all the way. Then I use the bayonet to tighten it. And you could tighten it additionally with a screwdriver if you want to. There we go. I would recommend it. So there is the connection for my lens right there. So I wanna connect this little guy with these tiny, tiny little pins inside this port right here. Super careful. They're, I mean, I've never had one break, but they are very tiny pins, so be careful. You just pop it in and screw it on. Yeah, just like that. Listen, if there's any old broadcasters out there who know better than I do, leave a comment. Tell me if I'm doing something that you think I could do better. But uh, after 15 years or so, I've, I've managed. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna slide that aside for a second. This is the cable for the viewfinder, so I am gonna attach that now. I also have a, one of these for the viewfinder. By the way, all the cameras come with like a whole bunch of these numbers, the CCUs do too. So once you decide which camera is which, you go ahead and pop the numbers in on your viewfinder and on your CCU panel so that you don't get confused which camera goes to which panel when you're connecting them. I didn't get an eyepiece viewfinder because we're not using them, using them for that. I want the straight end to go in here and the curved end to go in the camera. All right. So that just pops right in there, just like that. All right, we'll go ahead and we'll put on the extra sunscreen, or not sunscreen, what is this called? Sunscreen hood, right? Yeah. Then you screw them in, just like that. Nothing major. And I'm gonna stick it on the camera, like so. That sticks out quite a bit. There's a whole b bunch of different ways you can feed the cable and they have like places where you can attach the cable to, but I'm just gonna plug it in for testing and I'll fix that afterwards. There. Now that's pretty much ready to go. I'm just gonna push this aside for a few minutes and talk about the CCU. It's a pretty basic CCU. Honestly, Sony hasn't changed the look of them in a long time. So you can actually have several different outs coming out of your camera. You have a SDI return or a VBS return. What that does is you take your program feed from your broadcast mixer and you put it back into this SDI port and you program it as the return feed. So there's a button on this called return, RET. You usually have one on the back that you can program to be your return feed or here so that the cameraman can use this to see if, if one of the fellow camera operators has a shot of the guitarist, he knows or she knows not to take a shot of the guitarist, they can take a different shot. So you send your program feed or your, your live mix back into the camera system and you loop it in and out so it goes all the way to all of the cameras. There's the return feeds. There's your four SDI outputs. You have reference loop. Uh, what reference does. From the old film days, you'd have uh, 
you know, like a film strip, you'd have a line between the frames, and they developed this timing system to help all the frames come together in multi-camera things. Now, now we have shutter, we have the, the frame rates of the camera. It basically times those frames so you don't get any black lines in between or you don't have any drifting in the pictures. Sometimes the pictures will actually drift in different directions. There's other things you can do. You can do horizontal and vertical adjustments to everything, different timings that you can do, shifts that you can do in the CCU. Depending on whether you're in North America or in Europe, you're going to use black burst or you're going to use color bars to do that. But uh, essentially, that's what you do. You put your reference signal in, and it helps all the cameras sync up to the right frame rate together. And everything else that you have in your system. I mean, you have a million options for what you want to have come out of this. Like You have the SDIs, so you can have signal for each individual camera. You could have one going to your mixer. You can have one going to uh, separate recording, so you can record every camera separately. You have a prompter feed out, too. So if you want, if you have a engineer or, or your guy managing your remotes, your Bing guy if you're in Europe, or your, your ENG guy if you're in North America, uh, he can get an individual feed from each of the cameras to see uh, what what he needs to do to adjust them in a live situation. Like especially if you're in a hockey arena, you might have color shift because of all the fluorescent lights in the arena. So one one end of the arena could be more yellow, one could be more blue. Same if you were on a football field. So that's why you have prompter out and all that jazz. Oh. That's SDI out on the top for the 4K, SDI out on the bottom for regular. That's new to me. And then you have some extra things like extra VBS picks and all that sort of stuff. Again, all extra things for the engineering guys to use. Yeah. On the front of the CCU, you have a lot of the controls that you would have on the RCP, on the remote. But uh, so if you if your boss was cheap and they didn't buy the remote for you, you could still manage to color balance using the front panel. But so much easier with the remote. All right. So we're going to attach the remote to the CCU, the camera to the CCU, and we're going to see if we get picture. All right. Then we're done for today. I'm going to actually take. SDI output one. I'm going to take the HD SDI because I'm not sure if that's a 4K. All my broadcast monitors are in use today, so I had to steal a regular computer monitor with a Blackmagic converter H SDI to HDMI. So we'll use the HDI out and see what we get. I'm going to connect the B and C to that port. I'm going to connect the RCP remote cable. You guys see that? Just like that. There we go. And of course, the the most important part, the fiber optic cable. The camera should get its power. It should get everything it needs. There we go. All right. And then all I need is one of my lovely assistants to press power on the front of the unit. There you go. CCU is on. And there. Hey, look at that. You get a set of menus that are inside the camera. And then from the pics out, I can get the menus for the CCU as well. So I have a little bit of configuring I have to do because I have to see uh, that everything is in the same format and the mixer board is in the same format. But essentially, that's how it is. So I'm going to shoot at Caleb. Look, you guys can see all the messy boxes we have over there. All right, we don't actually, there's Caleb. So look, zoom on the camera works fine. Now, if I use the remote, you gotta activate the panel and I gotta take off auto iris because I don't want that. Yeah, so I can take them all the way. Yeah, so that's all working, that's great. I can give it ND filters, I believe, from here. Yeah, look at that, look, watch my ND filter. Yeah. And then back again. So the control through RCP is working great, the CCU is working great. Last thing for us to try is to make sure that we get the zoom and focus configs working. So they sent some extra little cables, two different types. So this here should attach to this here. And this guy 
attaches on the bottom. There we go. This actually feeds the camera now on that side, so that should just go just like that. There we go. And then the lens, instead of, so the extra servo is feeding the camera and the lens is being connected into the servo itself here. Where's my two dots? There's my two dots. Just like that, I give them a little bit of tightening. And then this guy is for the focus demand. So now I use this to connect to these, I assume. Get in there, there we go. All right, now this should screw on here. I can't see at all what I'm doing here. There it is. There, okay, now. We're gonna fire the system back on. Camera operator hit my power. Once he's on, I'm gonna fire on the camera and the viewfinder. There we go, yeah. So now, I should be able to throw focus. Oh yeah, look at that. And I should be able to zoom. There it is. All the, let's go all the way in and see if I can focus on that now. Walls in. <laughs> right, right. Anyway, you, you do have some options. You can change the directions on the remotes and you can change the speeds of the servos and everything like that. There's controls both on and off on the remote, on the handles and on the actual servos itself. All right, guys. Well, that was a little bit complicated, but I hope you like it. A little bit behind the scenes of what I'm doing this week. I have a couple more of these to put together that I'm gonna put them in a bus and they're gonna go and record conferences all summer long. So I hope you like and subscribe. I hope you found this helpful. And if there's any other questions you have, and again too, if there's anybody out there who knows how to do this better than I do and you have a tip for me, go ahead, fire it off. I love to hear it. Yeah, thanks for watching guys. We'll see you in the next one.